Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for coming to my channel. This is Jay Lee's Corner. I am, of course, Jay Lee. This is just notes. It's not something weird in the background. Um, and this is my review for uh, Queen Sugar. This is episode one of season two. And But first things first, as always, guess what Jay Lee loves? Jay Lee loves new subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, it just lets you know when I have new content and new videos that you can see what I post and like and share and comment. So please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I do love new subscribers. I've only been active on YouTube for two months and I love it already. So yep, I love new subscribers. But let's just get into notes, as I said before. Uh, let's just get into this episode of Queen Sugar. Um, as we know, it's about the three siblings who are working their father's land and they are trying to run like a sugarcane um, operation, business, and everything like that. But we see season two start off with good old Nova, who seems to still be loving the white chocolate. Um, you know, it's just a scene of her in her garden, and you see the Caucasian sexy gentleman walk up behind her. And as you see, they had a wonderful night, I'm guessing. And she's like, okay, you can go now. Um, so that's how the scene started off. Nova is the sexually fluid sibling. So she's always doing something or someone. Um, it goes into Charlie, who's in a meeting. Because at the end of season one, Charlie wanted to get a sugar cane, like a sugar meal. Um, because all the sugar meals in where they are in Louisiana is owned by a family family. Who used to own their family um so you know who wants to you know work with someone who their ancestors owned your ancestors she's like no ma'am so charlie tried to put a boss but she wants to get by a sugarcane factory so she's talking to investors and at first they're all gun ho but they are only wanting to invest if her husband davis is involved as we know davis is a piece of shit Davis is, you know, a cheater. He's a he's a good piece of shit. You know, he's a piece of shit. Um, and they're not in the best place right now because they are in the middle of a separation slash divorce scandal mess of everything. Um, so she just says, oh, okay, we'll, you know, get it figured out. We'll get him involved because she wants to do whatever she can to get this sugar cane field. And her boyfriend, you know, I'm, I'm going to call him Nubu because I can't remember his name. Um, he's not happy about that because as he's saying, you know, in the media, you guys are still married. They don't even know that you guys are not together, even if you're working on a separation behind closed doors. So, you know, no, I don't want to go out and celebrate with you, you know, because you're still married. So we need to just chill out until you can get that figured out. So what she doesn't really like, but, you know, she's like, you know, what else can I do? Um, Ralph Angel. Sexy, sexy Ralph Angel. Ralph Angel, whose his real name is Kofi, uh, he is just, he looks like just like an Adonis. He is just, he is just, I'm not even really, he's just so sexy. It's just like, it's, um, it's just, he's so sexy, it's distracting. Because when he starts talking and he has the little twang to his voice and you just get distracted and you just want him to, you know, just come over and sit down on your couch and you just make him breakfast. I'm looking at my couch as if he's sitting there, which is hilarious. But yeah, I just, he is just so, so sexy. But he's back with his baby's mama, um, which is a good thing. They only broke up because of her drug addiction. She is off drugs. She's getting herself together. And they are trying to work towards being, um, you know, co-parenting a couple, being together. They're trying to work on that. And so he's showing his son Blue the field because he's saying, you know, this is our land. This is a part of you. This is a part of me. You know, you can always come here for peace and serenity, basically. Um, but you can see as he's talking to his girl, he's also very conflicted about letting his sisters know that he found their father's will, which didn't leave the land to all three of them. It left the land to him. Um, so he's conflicted with letting them know that, you know, should I let them know that? If I do, they're going to probably try to fight me for it. And, you know, he's just not ready for that um, conf that confliction of what to do with, with between his sisters. Um, 
Micah, who was Charlie's son, is still not on good terms with his dad, Davis, because Davis is a piece of shit. Um, and as is Micah's 16th birthday, his mom is just trying to get him to, like, just talk to his dad. Um, Aunt Vi, who was trying to get in touch with Hollywood. Hollywood left because he saw her, like, hanging out with someone. But it was after he, she found out he had a fucking wife. So, you know, when Hollywood left last season, for me, I was like... It's kind of a punk-ass move because you had your own secret and she needed time to wrap her head around that secret. You can't now be upset with her and you leave. So since he's been gone, they haven't really been communicating. So she's looking at his Facebook page. She hasn't updated. He's, you know, she's calling him. He's not answering, um, which is kind of crazy. Even though, you know, towards the end of the episode, you know, he did finally answer the phone. Um, because in the earlier scene, he was talking to Ralph Angel, asking Ralph Angel about everyone else. And Ralph Angel, like, you know, ask what you really want to ask about Aunt Vi. But he also said to uh, Hollywood, I'm not getting in the middle of that. If you want to see how she doing, you know, talk to her, answer the phone. So, when Vi calls him, um, he does answer. He kind of reassures her um, about Micah being okay and they're having a conversation. But in the back of my mind, he hadn't something. I don't know what he hadn't. But he had something. I'm pretty sure that will come out, you know, later on down the line. But he had something else, which is not a good thing because you was already had a wife. Now what the fuck is you had? You know, who knows what it could be. Um, so, you know, I'm by Charlie and Nova are all hanging out at a club. And who do they see? Davis piece of shit ass. You know, with some girl all out in public, just, you know, shining like there's nothing wrong with that. And when Charlie confronts him, he is like, well, you know, they know me here. You know, no one has any cameras. You know, I'm good here. It's like, but nigga, that ain't the point. Like, the point is, you shouldn't be out in public with a bitch. When we're trying to save your damn image, when you was already caught up in a scandal in season one. And he had the audacity to have security come and remove out that. Nigga. I just, Davis is just such a piece of shit. He just aggravates my soul. I just don't like him. Ugh. He's sexy, though, but he's an asshole that's sexy. Um, but, you know, if you notice from, it was a conversation that Nova was having with her friends at the baby shower. And how they were kind of just discussing different issues within the world. Whether it is, you know, a woman having a baby without a man. Um, women and how they are in the workplace. Being sexually fluid. I like how it was a conversation amongst women. Um, just speaking on different topics that that's the kind of stuff that we do talk about. So it's cool that Ava, the director of the show, likes to place little um, real life conversations, things that's really going on in the world as of today into the mix of the conversations. Because even when the woman who was pregnant with twins come to find out she's pregnant on her own, she probably got, you know, inseminated and she's saying, well, you know, my mom is saying I didn't do it the right way. And Nova's like, but what's the right way? You know, things are different for people these days. I like how it was they were having that conversation. Um, Micah getting pulled over by the police angered me. Um, solely because I kind of knew where it was going to go. I knew they wouldn't kill him and shoot him. I didn't know that. But I thought it was going to be a thing of him being arrested, him getting, you know, him being in jail, and that type of thing. Hold on one second. So, I think that's hilarious that I was like, hold on one second. As if I was talking to someone. But, in hindsight, I am. But, my phone kept ringing. So, I had to pause it and answer it. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. But, yeah. Um, Micah being arrested. So, the scene... I, the reason it angered me is because I knew exactly what they were trying to portray. Um, young black boy in a very nice car getting put over by a white cop. And... I was like, well, I said I knew they wasn't going to shoot him. I didn't know that. I knew they weren't going to murder him. Um, but I was like, it's going to be something because Ava has a habit of making sure to intertwine real life scenarios and stuff that's going on in society today into the show. So when Micah is pulled over and I see he's in this very, very nice car that his dad has got for him for a 16th birthday and I'm like okay let's see just how 
real is this scene gonna get? Like, is he gonna be an asshole racist cop? Is he gonna be a nice cop? And Mike is just scared. Like, what's gonna be the, the scenario? And when the cop pulls him over, and you, I just, it pissed me off for the simple fact that this is what really goes on. So that part of it made me mad. And just watching the scene of a scared kid who hasn't done anything. And then when he asks the cop, why did you pull me over? The cop doesn't even give any reasons to why he pulled him over. And then the fact that Micah did not have his license on him. It was like the cop had the perfect reason to, you know, okay, yeah, I, could, I can get him on something. You know, that really made me mad. Because my thing is, you at least should have told the boy why you pulled him over. But, of course, he did not. And when he then asked Micah to get his, you know, registration for the car. And Micah goes to grab for it. He instantly pulled his gun out. You know, get out the car. That kind of stuff, it pissed me off. Because I'm looking like, the fact that cops will tell you, you know, get me something out your car. And when you reach to go get it, they react in a scared manner. Just for the simple fact. That, you know, it was a black kid. You know, a black person. I think that is so frustrating. And that's what's going on in the world as well. So, that's frustrating too. Um, So, but I kept wondering, why was he pulled over? And, you know, it was like Micah should not have had to say, I have to reach over to get my registration. My thing is, you shouldn't be so scared. If you're that scared of any race of people, any age of people, any whatever of people, you should not be a cop. You should be able to let someone reach to grab their registration without you reach to grab your goddamn gun. So that pissed me off. Um, when his phone rang and it went to voicemail, what I honestly, well, I mean, when his phone buzzed and he pushed the button, I honestly was hoping... Okay, maybe he pushed the button and answered the phone. So whoever's calling is hearing this interaction go on. I don't know if that was going to pre be the premise of it to where something crazy was going to happen. And then it w there would be this recording of what happened. But that isn't what happened because it pans to the family at the house having dinner. Wondering where Micah is and thinking he's just taking too long to get there. So, you know, at one moment when Davis calls Charlie to say, you know, why are you guys ignoring my calls? And she's like, I'm not. You know, we're at dinner. And he's like, well, yeah, I keep calling Micah. He isn't answering either. He left my house hours ago. And then Charlie's like, well, you know, I'll call him and figure out whatever. He's probably with his little girlfriend. And then when she's trying to call and find him, she can't find him either. So, of course, the family um, panics. So, when they do finally figure out that, you know, one, he's been taken to jail. And they show, the, you know, him being taken to the jail and he's been, they, you know, sit him down. And he's like, you know, he's yours now. And he's saying, you know, can I get a phone call? That boy is a minor. When they told that boy he had to wait, that ain't the law. I, I mean, by law, if you have a minor, you're supposed, you're, you as the police people are supposed to contact their parents. He isn't an, he isn't an adult. But I'm assuming because he did not have his license, he could not prove he was underage. But at the same time, if you run his name or look up his name, you would, one, find out he's a basketball star's son. And two, you would find out that he's a minor and you should call his parents. So, you know, they just show them putting him into a cell, which looked like to me with other adults. And he's a damn child. That pissed me off as well. Um, So when... Nova and Charlie, you know, realize where his car could be because they follow the road to where he would have been coming home. They find his car. Of course, they're panicking. Then her phone rings. It's like, okay, he's been arrested. So they're at the scene where they're at the jail. And Charlie just wants to know where her son is because he has been arrested. And she's very, very in mother mode, mother bear, mother lion. She's ready to attack. And Nova has to kind of be the calm one to get somewhere with the police to even look into the system to see if he's there and they're looking and supposedly he's not in the system which doesn't mean he isn't there it just means y'all haven't processed his ass yet and you know then Dave was come walking this old piece of shit ass in there and you know he's like you know let me do my thing and you see him switch you see him flip it on to where now he's the basketball star let me shuck and jive and dance with these white folks 
as they said on the show, I ain't trying to be racist. But, you know, he's being extra nicey, nicey, nicey. I don't want to be extra nice when you have my 16-year-old son in jail and I don't know why he was arrested. My thing is, it's a way to be nice to people but still get some motherfucking answers. And Davis was just playing that I'm a famous basketball player role and taking motherfucking selfies with the goddamn cops. Man, fuck y'all. What my son at, bruh? What my son do, bruh? I don't want to take a picture with you, bruh. Where my child at? Point blank, period. And then the fact that he was like, you know, can y'all just go check the holding cell? And that's where my son is. And y'all, because what if we would have left and he, my son would have just been here? Mm -mm. You wouldn't have got no picture from me. Not at all. No, sir. I need some answers. And I still kept wondering, why was he arrested? Because, see, because my thing is, even if you don't have your license on, do you have a license? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, he had to have been there for some hours. It just, it just pissed me off because it was just stupid. So, you know, they get him out. They still don't, they still don't address why he was arrested. I'm assuming since he didn't have a license. And the cop was an asshole. Um, why his parents weren't called, you know, we still don't know who called Nova to say he was arrested, you know, but whatever. Um, but you know, when he comes out and Nova's standing next to him and they pan down and you see that he actually, you know, peed on himself because he was a child in jail. Now, they don't say what happened to him. I kept thinking when they showed that part. I mean, he was in a holding cell. Like, what exactly could happen in a holding cell? I don't know because, you know, I'm not, you know, I can't say that I've been a part of that type of situation. But, um... I'm like, you know, did they try to rape him? Did someone, you know, I'm like, what happened to make him pee on himself? Something had to have happened to make him pee on himself. It couldn't have been him just in jail. You know, someone had to do something to scare him or something. So that part pissed me off because now this child has this issue that he's going to have to deal with. Um, and so many kids people in America is going through the exact same thing. You know, innocent, but they locked up and they have to deal with the consequences or even the mindset of being in jail in a holding cell or whatever it may be. Um, and Nova takes her shirt off and covers up his shorts, you know, to say there's nothing to be ashamed of and that we'll get through this. And then, you know, of course, Davis and Charlie are arguing Mainly because Charlie's like, you came here and shuck and jive for them. You know, it's your fault that he's here. Why would you buy a 16-year-old kid that kind of car? Which is true. Um, in this day and age. So it was a whole conversation of him saying, well, she's just jealous because he was the one, you know, that was able to get him out. And, you know, of her not having control. But the thing is, they're arguing, not even realize their son is sitting there in a lot of ways traumatized and they're too busy arguing amongst each other so i like when they kind of both have that moment and realize it and then they stop arguing and then michael walks to his dad his dad is saying that we're going to get through this um they never address what happened i'm pretty sure that'll come up later on in the season um i'm still wondering what happened in that damn cell honestly truth be told so, you know, the next thing is of uh, Ralph Angel's old sexy ass. I'm um, talking to his girlfriend. I can't remember what her name is right now. Um, and the girlfriend is being honest about them just now getting back on track. Um, how kind of it's, it's moving really fast. And how she wants to slow things down. Just so that they aren't moving so fast. Of, you know, we were broken up. Did not like each other. Was mad at each other. Then we had sex, got back together, and now I basically live with you. Um, and she's like, you know, I need to slow this down from my own sobriety, from my own mindset. We need to we need to take this step by step so that we're not overdoing it. And his thing was, well, you're not breaking up with me. And she's like, no, I'm not. But we just need to take things slow. And I think that's a great thing because sometimes people will be so enthralled in the passions of sex and love and whatever that they forget that's not all that there is to a relationship um and sometimes that is what can ruin a relationship so i'm happy that within her sobriety um and talking in her the the aa or either aa or na i don't know was alcoholics anonymous or Narc narcotics anonymous meeting um how how she had that realization that she's being 
pushed or pulled into this family dynamic, you know, I'm being put back into everything's okay, you know, kind of too fast. So I, I'm, I'm happy they had that conversation to where they're not breaking up. She'll still be there. And, and it's another storyline, basically. Um, and then the episode ended with Charlie signing Davis's name on that contract. Because if you ask me, he owe her that. At least. I mean, you are your fucking prostitutes and embarrass me all up, up and through the blogs. Um, you can at least sign this, you know, it's you owe me, homie. Um, and plus, I thought when they said they would need him to sign off on it. How many times, people know wives sign husband's names and vice versa all the time. It's usually whichever person is the one who handles the business is used to signing the other person's name because sometimes, you know, as a spouse, and when you have a good communication and a good um, partnership with your husband or wife, there's nothing wrong with that. So, I thought it was cool <laughs> that she did that. I mean, he owes her. So, you know, the preview for the upcoming season does look very entertaining. I'm looking forward to doing a video every week. Cannot wait. So, yeah, that was my review of tonight's episode of um, Queen Sugar. So, until next time, people, thanks for checking me out. Subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and share my videos. Until next time, peace.